Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm very well. Are you a fan of uh, Enid Blyton? I think it's hard to find people who aren't a fan of Enid Blyton, to be honest. I think it's she's one of those writers that certainly my mum's generation absolutely loved. Uh, you know, Enid Blyton passed away in the late 60s and my mum was born in the early 60s. So even, you know, I think my grandma probably loved loved Enid Blyton books as well. And they're the sort of things that I think parents like to pass on to their children. Yes. Now, English heritage, it's one of these situations where I don't really approve of this. So you, you take a statue that's an offending statue because there's links to slavery and the solution, rather than pull it down, is to put a sort of explanation of that link to slavery. Quite why you have to do that, I do not know. Uh, but that seems to be how people get through these very complex modern situations. Now, English Heritage uh, has uh, uh, linked Enid Blyton's work uh, in this one, in the explanation next to her plaque, uh, to linked it to racism and xenophobia. Uh, this, of course, is in the light of the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, the Enid Blyton Society said this is an insulting reappraisal of an extremely uh, talented and brilliant writer who was, of course, a woman of her time. I mean, there are moments in her books uh, which uh, do not gel with the way people think and talk now uh, but that's only to be expected I mean she's a woman of her time so it, it's this judgment of Enid Blyton by the standards of today it's entirely unfair we're undermining you know a legendary fantastically successful author who entertained millions of children all over the world and still does we're undermining her by saying she's xenophobic and racist because she was a child of her time it's not fair is it well, I don't think it's entirely unfair. You know, um, literary critics did note sort of racist undertones in her work during her lifetime. So this isn't a new, you know, it's not sort of woke culture gone mad in 2021 and being retrospective. You know, these things were noted during Enid Blyton's lifetime as well. Um, but I think it is fair to say that, you know, this was a woman who started writing in the 1920s and certainly things were different. There are names of characters in her books that probably we wouldn't use yeah, no, now. No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, let's not. And, and, and parents, <laughs> parents reading books to their children certainly probably would would change the names or or, or you know a, adapt the story as, as they read it. And I, I believe you can buy books where the names have been changed to save parents having to try and keep track of things. So I think I actually think it's it's not unreasonable to make this sort of note. Um, I can understand why people think it's you know um, doing down Britain, but I think it's okay to to take a look back at history and say it wasn't all perfect. I think a hundred years from now people will say that about us, but I think this is probably on balance the right thing to do if, if the alternative is you know taking the plaque down which English Heritage have said they have no intention of doing um, or you know taking the books you know out of circulation entirely that would be a much greater loss I think to you know the children of Britain and, and you know something that stirs a lot of passion for reading in children so I think adding a note to the website while some people might disagree I think is at, at the more acceptable end of noting that you know times have moved on and that people may want to bear that in mind when reading her work. I can't stand these stupid explanations, <laughs> these notes. That they, they're ridiculous. But uh, this isn't the first time Enid Blyton has been in trouble. Uh, on In 2016, the Royal Mint uh, rejected her for commemoration on a 50p coin uh, because the advisory committee uh, recorded that she was, and I quote, a racist, sexist, homophobe, and not a very well regarded writer. That's over the top, isn't it? I think, yeah, I think that is over the top. I think, you know, there is a distinction between using words that were racially inappropriate now, but, but certainly in more common use in the 1920s and being a racist and being a homophobe. I mean, given that homosexuality was illegal uh, until almost entirely the end of Enid Blyton's life, right. I don't think people should be entirely surprised that she didn't have progressive views that perhaps are more common, you know, thankfully are more common now. And to say that she's lacking in, in literary merit, I think is an insult to the millions of people worldwide who absolutely adore her books. Yeah, you see, that's what they're saying. I think it's because 
you, you know, you can make these links to, shall we say, outdated attitudes about race, uh, homosexuality, and etc. connected to Enid Blyton. Uh, that seems to give the crit her critics leeway to say, oh, well, there wasn't much literary merit in her work mm -hmm. either. And that's what they're saying about uh, her books. That's what English Heritage is saying in the explanation, uh, that she wasn't a particularly well-regarded writer. Uh, I think that's a bit unfair. Yeah, I, I think it's d demonstrably untrue, really, given how many people, you know, love her books, how many millions of copies that she sells, not just in the UK, but all across the world. And I think a whole generation of, of children, probably that was, you know, devouring those kind of, you know, famous five books and, and so on, um, because they were so easy to read and so enjoyable for, for many, many people. Indeed. Uh, yeah, it's a shame. I just think it's just a bit sad. There's no need to sort of trample on people's graves like this. Uh, Emma, thank you so much for your time. Emma Revel, there, Head of Public Affairs at the IEA.